Hi guys, welcome in to um, this new edition of Chalk Talk where we are going to have uh, a new offensive side of the perspective where we are going to talk about receiving route tree concepts, all of that stuff. If you have missed, we did not do it last week, but we did it the week before and the week before that where we talked coverages. If you want to go back and learn about coverages, myself, John Stephenson, who's going to be on here in a second, we talked about odd coverages, cover one, cover three, man free. And then we talked about open coverages, even coverages, cover two, cover four, cover six, a little bit. Ton of stuff to learn there. If you want to understand what's going on on Sundays, why the bird are doing something well or why they're missing something, it's important to, to watch this stuff, in my opinion. Or if you're listening to the podcast, I think you can get something from it on, on a podcast perspective, but I'd like to think you need the visual sometimes. And that's what we're trying to do is provide you with some sort of visual to understand some of the things that are happening on the field. We are going to talk, like I said, we're going to go through the whole route setup, um, the route tree from a basic perspective. And again, this stuff, this stuff really varies from place to place. And, and I can't say that enough that certain things that are at the NFL level are not even remotely being taught at the, at the, at the college level sometimes, or even down, especially down to the high school level. So I think it's really an important thing to understand that there's going to be varying levels to all of this stuff, and we're going to try to teach you as simple a way as we can possibly teach you. Uh, we're going to welcome in John, John Stephenson, who's going to go through this with us. John, how are you? Doing great, Jake. Thanks for having me as always. Yeah, let's do it. So we are going to go uh, and we're going to talk uh, pretty simplistic route tree stuff to go first. So I'm going to try to pause this thing here, and we're going to go through a route tree. Now, from a young age, okay, you're taught as a wide receiver there are going to be routes that you're going to run. They have they have simplified this route tree stuff, uh, and it's been in a number system in air raid offenses dating back to how Mummy's uh, development. You can track it all the way back. I mean, this is this goes way back when spread air air raid concepts started. There's a number system for these things. So I wanted to put you know there's the right side is the geographic the name of the route, but I also wanted to have another graphic here posted with the numbers. So some teams playbooks. And again, if you have not, we, we also did way back when kind of a general huddle structure and play calling in the huddle, how that stuff comes together. If you're interested, it's a ton of information in there about how that stuff works at the NFL level. And really it, it tracks all the way back to your younger levels. I, I can tell you cut, you know, in the huddle, it's always been, you know, the formation motion, concept run or pass the concept of it and then the snap cadence it's just it's always been that way. i don't know who started it but that's always been that way for me tracking through every level now with with routes and what we're specifically talking about today there is a number system that came into place that some places use now not all places call it like some teams would call it doubles right 454 or what they would number the routes outside in or inside out i did not play in any offenses that did it that way but some have done it to simplify how past concepts are, are, are labeled. So you would hear, like if you heard, um, for example, curl flat, you would hear somebody say maybe 14 is the route concept because it's a one and a four and it works this way. And have you coached in any offenses, John, or, or maybe you communicate this with your players? Because some teams, uh, communication wide receiver coach to, to wide receivers will be like, they'll call it a bang eight or something like a post. They'll call a post an eight route. They just they use the numbers just to communicate about the routes. Now the route concepts might have names. They talk about routes when that discourse goes on. They'll talk about numbers for these things sometimes. I didn't come up that way. I didn't play in any systems that way. Have you coached or did you find yourself in any of those? Yeah. So um, our uh, our current wide receiver coach, current offense I'm in, uses this uh, this a or uh, Don Croyel or Eric Croyel route tree. Yeah. So um, going back to uh, to Husifer, he was a big. Uh, he was a big Croyle guy. Um, he was. Came out of the offense him and uh, said Yeoman and so on. But yeah, so we um, we do use this route tree. Uh, it's similar. Um, going over it here, uh, the only difference is for us, a one is a, a hitch. We kind of break trend there. If you look at the numbers, you notice that the uh, odd number routes are outside breaking, the even number routes are inside breaking, and a, a hitch does break inside. But we don't have a flat on our tree. But other than that, yeah, this is how we. Uh, this is how we coach up the kids, the freshmen, when they come in here. In fact, for the last uh, about last six weeks, that's all we've been doing. Just every single day, at least on the offensive days, working with the young cats, just going through the route tree, one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, when it comes to the play calls, 
um, those are all um, those are all concept based. We'll have a name for them. Um, you know, some some that you've heard of, some everyone knows, like mesh or you know curl flat. Others will have state names. Like we have a play called Florida. Um, you know, city mm-hmm. names, just on and on and on. So sometimes it's we're, we're describing the play more conceptually, and, and sometimes um, you know we'll have tags on it where maybe you. Uh, you add a rate, like maybe you're you're running mesh, and then you want to uh, tag the uh, tailback wheel. So you'll you'll make the call, and then you'll add T wheel to it. So um, yeah, I, I've never been involved with an offense that uh, uses the the number system, like going to you know, airport uh, like a five five two five post swing, or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. let's see, I think the bang eight came from there as well. So yeah, yeah, well, it, uh, it did, it did, for sure. Um, yeah. So before I keep rambling too much more, yeah, back to you. <laughs> No, no, no. We, we, this is, this is what's weird about football is how these things come together. And this outre stuff has been tossed around forever. But like, they're, the thing about the NFL is these routes get adjusted so much. And there's so many more routes than are on this tree. So uh, we're going to go through all the routes on this tree. But I just wanted to put up another tree, which showed you some of the, the crazy differences. And, and just, there's so many different routes. Like, look at this. Um, you know, some teams call it like they'll call it spot route, they'll call a stab route, they'll call drag routes, they'll call it dart, which if you see here, dart will run up and across, and there's a teaching point to it. I could have put a Kyle Shanahan playbook in front of you, but it, there's so much. There's just so much. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's it a little confusing. So that we both, Jake and I both have um, a, I believe it's a 2018 uh, San Francisco 49ers offensive playbook, and as part of that, they include a um, – an entire PDF. I'm just going through um, each and every route, and it's it's just incra- or crazy how many. I'd say there's 50, 60, 70 on that list. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable! And and they'll yeah. add to, it, and they'll be like in season new routes they'll put in. You know, based on the stem release. Like if you look at this bench route, which you know some people call a basic ten yard out of sale, uh, but if you talk about a bench route, you're talking about a five yard stem. You're hitting five, you're planting vertical and rolling it 10 to 12. And it's like, okay, that's a completely different route. It's just, it's just, mm-hmm. it's just a lot. There's a lot, there's a lot of things you can do. A slice yeah. route, which, which is pushing vertical, you know, running down, down the street. You think back to that Miami Odell, Miami touchdown. What was that? 2019. He catches that ball in the left corner of the end zone. That was on a slice route, pushing vertical, running through the safety's numbers. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot of these and I don't want to get you guys lost in the weeds about all these different routes, yeah. but we're going to teach you the basics, but man, I don't want you to watch something on on Sunday and be like, "Well, I've never seen that one before," because there's a lot we can't cover here. There just is. Yeah, yeah, so, there's a ton of detail. Yeah, let's look at let's 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 look at uh, some of the basics. This is just a flat route. I want to highlight each time we're going to highlight the receiver we're paying attention to. This is just a little pick concept here. Uh, it might be double slants with the slide to the flat, which is. A concept yep. the Browns ran a lot last year because, if you recall, they ran something similar when uh, Minka Fitzpatrick picked off that ball in Pittsburgh, ran it back for a touchdown. Uh, the same, they came back to that this concept in the playoffs, and Baker finally read it right and let Minka uh, jump up forward and, and hit uh, Jarvis right behind him, if you recall, for a touchdown. So pretty similar. But we're just looking at the simplistic route here. So this is Jarvis Landry, who's sliding in motion. Right? Yeah, so this was a uh, – yeah, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, oh, so say, this was a this was a fourth and two. I believe this is a fourth down, and yep. they're they're running this concept because they're anticipating some type of man coverage. And so this is what's beautiful. Running. Watch the Bengals here. Twenty four. This guy sliding. Watch these two run into each other and get frustrated. Throws his hands up, pouting. That's what you want. You want to create some last second confusion, right? And you guys, coach John, your DBs. You're either sticking with it or are you passing. What's easier for you, passing this or sticking, sticking, trying to uh, run, yeah. run the route over top of it to try to beat them to the? No, side? we'd have to, we'd have to stick with this. So when we get motion from one side to the other, we can do something called spinning, which, without getting into too much detail, it's a way of, of essentially exchange, the safeties exchange roles or whoever has like the guy that starts in motion, he becomes the middle of the field safety. The middle of the field safety takes that guy, gotcha. but. With the way this is working, they we would have we call this lock and level. So you're going to lock onto your guy, but we're going to stand at different levels. So when this exact situation happens, where they're trying to use those slants to uh, to create a pick or a rub, um, you know, some one guy's running under, one guy's running over. Yeah, you you would ideally like him to to maybe run the route over top and beat him to the spot right here. That's a tough. Yeah. It's tough. That's why coordinators yeah, run it. Yeah, he's going to have to with the two on the ball right there. And the reason I think the reason they have two on the uh, line of scrimmage there. Uh, is because I think it's a tight end. Contacts aren't in, but yeah, yeah, tight end there. He, like he's not even really trying to run her out. He's just trying to get him away. 
they, they know they're going to Landry before uh, they snap yeah. the ball, particularly when they motion them and they see that man coverage. They just it's schemed um, up. Yep, perfect. Bottom of the screen, just a basic hitch route. This is, uh, I believe, week 14, that Monday night football game. Hitches typically are going to push to seven. Sometimes teams will dictate them and call them a six to five. You're definitely mm-hmm. driving back inside. You're going to turn to the inside, work back to the quarterback. Football should be a timing throw from your quarterback, should be on him when he comes out of the break because quarterback's yeah. eyes right here are reading this corner, right, typically. If he bails, which he does, you know, throw your hitch. It's a simple throw. You know, typically we're going to talk smash route a little later. You're going to get some sort of push vertical in a corner, which you're putting a pressure on this this player right here, your cornerback, to make a decision. If he's in coverage that requires him to bail and sit under it, then just take your hitch route. I mean, this is football 101. This is a concept. Smash is run at every level. I, I mean, even teams that are spread teams in high school are running it in middle school. So we're going to talk about some stuff that is not run at younger levels, but this is definitely one uh, that is – it is run at younger levels, and it's easy on quarterbacks. It's harder as you get older. John, I'm sure you can attest to this because these guys right here, this corner is so fast and shifty, and he can hit. Mm-hmm. He can put his foot in the ground, and they can ultimately cover both. Like, he can tease mm-hmm. you and then jump it, you know? If, so if it's a you, slower kid, go ahead. Oh, what, what you do is you, you teach that player to, to take away two routes, one with his uh, – take away one route with his body and one route with his eyes. So yeah, but looking at Smash specifically, what he wants to do is when he sees that hitch, he's gonna he's gonna look and find number two, and he's gonna sort of sink downfield to make that a tougher throw. So can, at least if they're in zone, so he can kind of cushion, you know, the corner out if it's coming, and then he's gonna take away that that hitch route with his eyes. Like the you know the generally the defense doesn't mind when the ball goes down low like that. Going back to um, when we talked about the Browns cover three base several weeks back, that's yeah. your kill zone. You got your no cover zone. The first five yards, you're letting the ball go down. You're going to rally and tackle. So. Well, here we typically teach kids to turn outside. Kareem just makes a judgment call, turns inside, which, you know, if corners coming up through all these years are used to an outside turn on any hitch route, you play that outside turn and watch what happens here. He plays it. What happened? Marlon Humphrey gets beat. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, you know, I yeah, know yeah. Kareem, and it depends on the, Kareem wanted to do that or not, but that that's, you know, he, a lot of um, a lot, a lot of teams will turn inside on their hitches. So they'll bring it back in like 45 or they'll do mm-hmm. sort of this is this is more of a new in a new age hitch but instead of uh you know like pressing vertical and then coming back at a 45 degree angle it's almost like they twirl when they're making uh you know making the yeah, break work, work inside toward the football and, and mm-hmm. kind of push that upfield yep this is simple slant top of the screen touchdown odell this is nice timing watch how patient odell is here at the top of the screen again trying to make my mouse larger so you can see it um Play action. Be patient. Don't burn it inside too quick. Watch the stutter at the top. Sells it. Boom. Inside. Easy touchdown. I mean, that doesn't get any easier than that at the NFL level. So that's uh, that's what is that? Number three, right? Yep. I think that's a three is a slant. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we look at uh, – no, that's two. Sorry, we did two one. Some route, some route trees do one as a, as a flat, one as a hitch. So oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah I, I included both. We looked at a this flat. Is, we looked at it just in case. For the sake of time, we didn't have a ton of time to do comebacks. Comebacks can be taught at different levels of the field. Some teams teach them 18 to 15. Some teams yeah. teach them 15 to 12. It depends on down and distance sometimes. This is a little out and go, out, out and up comeback. There's a name for this. I can't remember it off the top of my head. You're selling, you're out, turning up. It's a double move. You can see I should highlight the receiver I'm talking about here. So Jarvis yeah, at the bottom there. of the screen. This is back in 2018. Okay. Um, I cannot think of the name. It's pretty popular in the NFL level. It's not coming to me, but he's selling out and up, which is a double move concept that we see a lot in the NFL. And then he's sticking it at 18 balls out. Quarterback has to be on time back to 15 Mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. It's a man's throw. Do you know the name of that off the top of your head? There's a name for it. I just can't remember that. We I just call that a comeback. Yeah. I, I, it, it, can't think of it anyway yeah ball the big thing about comebacks is quarterback has to read it he has to throw with the anticipation so before he even gets to his 18 i bet baker has this ball out before his feet he should have the ball out quick i mean baker's got a live enough arm that the ball is going to get there right now but you got to throw mm-hmm. with the anticipation if it's late it's going to be picked off or knocked down it's got to be down and away toward the sideline okay uh we are probably looking at odell here i think we're talking curl so bottom of the screen here i just move that all over the place Okay, so right down here, curl. Some te- teams teach it 12 to 10. Some teams teach it 10 to 8. It depends on the concept. Mm-hmm. Um, you're just driving to your point, he's getting to 12, right? Balls. I think Case Keenum's in the game at this juncture. Yeah, this is the uh, first game. 
Yep. The, the so this is a, at this point. Yep. So this is uh, just a simple, and it's curl flat, which we're going to talk about this concept. If you watch Richard, he's just chipping and releasing to the flat. You know, yep. He's chip, yeah. Chipping West Coast classic. We call it Hank. Yep. Yes, sir. So we're going to drop here, drop the hips at 12, work back. If the ball's on you, I mean, he's just going to get enough for what he needs. It's a first and 10, 12 yard gain. Uh, let's see what we have here. We might have a. We have a. Um, uh, some people call the sale. Uh, just what is it termed on the on the sheet? We're going to go back to one ten. I'll jump us back, guys. Sorry. Uh, it's they just call it an out here. I mean, yeah. some people call it a sale. What do you have any other vernacular there used for that one? An out or a sale. Okay. Eight to ten is usually what the role is. Jarvis does a little inside stem. I should point out who he is. He's right here. Let me see if I can highlight him here. Okay. All right. We'll talk a little bit more when we talk sail concept and flood. It's a popular flood route that will be used to flood at levels of the field. Little stem rolls at 8 to 10. Quarterback, again, has to anticipatorily throw this football. Ball's out before Jarvis's head is around. You can see Baker's loaded up. The ball's out. Boom. It's on him. Give him a chance to get upfield and create some yards after catch. Pretty simple throw. Uh, here we have Odell. Have him in the point of trips here, okay? He's going to run a dig route. He's going to drive vertical, push to 10. He's turning it inside. Quarterback's reading leverage here, unless he gets man indicator, which based on this pre-snap, you're not getting any man indicators. So he's reading leverage here. So once he clears... Here, you can see the window come open. If 54 squats and hook here and sits on the dig, what are you throwing? Stick route right here, right? Pretty easy throw. Ball's out a little late here. Ball should be out already. He's a little late and a little behind him, but completion's made. Good thing it was behind him or 48 was taking his head off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I think we have a corner route concept here. Now, again, corner routes are... Depends on the, the – the general point of a corner route is you get from here, vertical, to here on a corner. Now, from this point, you can push inside heavily and come back. You can make it a quick corner route where you're stabbing and going. There's variations to this thing. You can make it a um, a corner post corner. You can get all kinds of crazy. And at the NFL level, they do. This one is just a very hard stem inside and then getting back to the corner as this play takes a while to develop because, if you recall, this is a reverse pass from Jarvis Landry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think in this offense they call this a circus route. A lot of teams will also call this, when, you, when you've got the number one running it, they'll call it a burst corner. Mm -hmm. Or they'll call it, was, it a, I had I had a friend of mine on from the CFL plays quarterback up there, and he had a different name they called it. I cannot remember it for – I was thinking about it when I was cutting this clip up, and I can't—I cannot remember it. But these things vary. They, they it's just different playbooks call them different things. It's all mm -hmm. about. Do you know what they call it in your offense? So, exactly. um, I think this is our bang eight right here, off the hard yep. play action roll. Right. I think we need to highlight uh, Richard Higgins at the top of the screen yeah. if I can get to the right point. Here. Sorry, man. I can only get it as clear as the NFL.com will allow me to get it. Their bandwidth gets all stretchy, and uh -huh. sometimes it's not crystal clear. So play action, sell it. You see the hard stem inside from Higgins. Watch his first five steps. I bet are going to be inside. One, two, three, four, five. Pushes vertical. So off of this, boom. He might give a quick shoulder fake outside and get to that corner post and get back in. You know, you want to sell that corner that he's got to keep honest outside. Mm -hmm. I think we do here, I have to recall. Oh, yeah, he pushes him outside yeah. for a split second. A lot of teams will call that a rocker step. You do mm -hmm. it for a corner post, post corner. Could yep. you, do, then, you know, put his hips opposite the break. Quarterback has got to give it some air, put him out in front of him, give him a chance to go get it. The fake is nice here. It sells everybody. Plenty of time to set up and throw. It's pretty tough, though, because Baker's working back away from it, has to turn the hips real quick mm -hmm. and put it, honestly, put it back on the opposite hash. Not an easy throw. Not at all. That's a good ball. It's a good catch. Given his body it, platform. Especially mm -hmm. given, yeah, given the weather in this game, too, mm -hmm. to get that ball out there is is, uh, is a nice indication. Now, we're going to do um, 
a couple clips here of, of f- fades and stuff are it's it's interesting. You you can you can call them fades. Some people call them goes. We call them takeoffs. It's whatever you want to call smoke. I've heard it called a smoke route. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard it called a bunch of stuff. You're just you're just outside vertical. I mean. That's how we taught it. However, you want to get there. If you're if you're hitting them with a different release chop, you go. You're getting outside vertical. Some you know. There's going to be teaching points. We want it three from the sideline. We want you to split the numbers in the sideline, depending on what your alignment is and what the scheme is. But the point is, you're pushing vertical. You're getting outside, and your your quarterback needs to put it on you outside. He needs to keep it outside, drop it in a bucket, and let you go make a play on it. Now, this is one of the best catches I saw all year from Rashard Higgins right here. And I love the Browns did this. And I talked about it during snap count stuff, John, and you weren't with me, you're on mm-hmm. vacation, but they de- teams are going to more of this touch snap where the second the center puts his hand on the ball, they're snapping it. Watch how the defense just isn't prepared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not set. I love it, man. It's a huge thing in the NFL yeah. last year. There's just touch snapping. Cause you know, you get you shotgun, you get all, you get all set up and his guard. The popular thing is the guard is tapping the center now um mm-hmm. when the quarterback's ready but yeah just again to the point of what the route is outside release and that's just it's a hell of a catch man and, yeah. and you know, baker gives him a chance here but this is richard higgins doing the work it's usually off a three-step drop yeah i mean that's just it's an amazing catch oh uh-huh. great better- timing too <laughs> yeah dpj had a week 14 catch against the the ravens on a simple fade beautiful catch um this was in the playoffs early in the game just again outside release get vertical win outside boom that inside step Quarterback drive. That's that's where you want it. We used to call it three from the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Uh, put it right on his outside shoulder. Keeps it away from the DB as best you can. It's literally putting a trash can out there and trying to throw it in the trash mm-hmm. can. It's just um, fade route stuff. And even on the end zone, you're trying to put it on the back pylon. You're just trying to put it in a place to let your guy go get it. And that's yeah. What they well, it's there. It's going out of bounds. One of the two. Yes. What is it? The content? Us or nobody is what the thing yeah, is. There. Yeah. If you play teams like Baltimore who say we're going to blitz the hell out of you, but we're going to give away indicators that we're going to play man, I hope Cleveland does more of this next year, which is, hey, let's call a slot fade with this big SOB number 85 mm-hmm. and let him just go work outside and go get the football. It's very simple. Again, some routes will have a hitch tied with it. I believe the bottom of the screen from Higgins, you'll get a hitch tied. Was it Hank? Is that what they – or Haas? Haas? I think it's Haas, right? Something uh, Haas Haas with a, a wide juke in the middle too, or what is so that, Yeah, that's uh, it's hitches from the outside, uh, seams from the number twos, and then you got yeah. the juke route coming from the, the number three or the tailback. But yeah, yeah, New England Patriots are famous for that when they run it out of empty. I think yep. they ran it like three times in a row. One of the recent Super Bowls, they run the heck Good out. Concept. They made a lot of money with that over the years. Tough to cover, and I mean, if you got a guy at number two, Gronk or eighty-five here, and, and Joku who can go get the football as I have to adjust my screen preferences to get this thing to go out of our face. I apologize. There's probably somebody who's smarter at Apple for me about locking this toolbar on the bottom of the screen. I don't know how to do it yet. So I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling. Anyway, just let him go get it. Outside shoulder again. David goes up, makes a hell of a catch. I should rewind it from the start. Hitch by the outside. He knows he's not getting the football. You can watch Jarvis's route at the bottom of the screen. He's not stupid. He knows what the matchup is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Put it on him. Go get it. Nice catch. Hopefully they do more of that with him next year. Knock on wood. Now double moves. Yeah, knock on wood. Now double moves. Uh, I want to put this one in there because it's one of the filthier ones I've ever seen. This is at the 10-yard line. So imagine how, how dangerous you have to be to get somebody to bite on a curl like this at the 10-yard line. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, just a ridiculous double move. I mean, I know you can't see the coverage, but man, that's a hard bite on a simple on a simple stab curl. And uh, double moves are tough, though, right? I mean, your DBs—that's probably the hardest thing to cover. And there's variations. There's out and ups. There's stop and go, hitch and goes. There's sluggos. You know, sluggos. there's sluggos. Sluggos are slant and go. Is a sluggo is is a name that we shorten that, and it's just kind of changed over the years. Their double moves are, I would say, you answer this, John. Is it the hardest thing for your DBs to handle or double moves? Uh, it's up there. It's up there, particularly when we're in uh, when we're in man coverage. And if it's set up well, you know, if you, you have a, let's say you, you hit a couple hitches on a guy. So when he sees a hitch that third time, he's ready to drive on the ball and then, boop, hitch and go. Yeah, they're just so hard, man, because you, 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 you play in so much anticipation at DB, trying to mm-hmm. jump plays, make a play on it, and – then he's he's by and it's it's hard, especially a guy like Odell who can who can go from stop right there and boom, he's back to full speed right now. I mean, mm-hmm. the difference mm-hmm. is guys at each level they they take time to build up. He doesn't take time to uh, to build up. And then we have a long. I think we call this a stick route. 
Stick routes can vary based on the offensive concepts. This is Jarvis. The Browns ran this against the Redskins, I believe, in like a third and eight, third and nine, maybe longer. They ran this uh, effectively all year. Odell ran it. I think this one is, like I said, Jarvis. You're just you're pushing vertical, stabbing at the first down marker, and getting mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. to the quarterback, uh, giving him a, giving him your numbers. And yeah, just right to the sticks. Yep. Everyone so let's said. talk. Con- let's talk concepts. Um, there's a lot of these. We tried to pick some ones that are pretty popular. Um, curl flat, pretty generic. I found a bunch of different team stuff on this. So we'll shout out anybody who I pulled some of these from. So this is uh, Eagles. Fran Duffy uh, is the guy who who came up with. He does great. F- I would say the Eagles do some of the best team think, scripted film stuff out there. I think they do the best in the game. Yeah, because they work directly Duffy. with the coaching staff. Yeah, mm-hmm. they do the they they work with the coaching staff. They put out what they can, and 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 Fran does a great job. He's, he's an Eagles employee. This is a mm-hmm. simple showing stem release, just curl flat, getting back. I think he, their depth here is 12 to 10, sitting in that window against zone coverage, right? Yep, so this is a West Coast uh, West Coast classic. Bill Walsh, they call it Hank. So you'll generally get mirrored curl flat routes on each side, and then you'll get an over-the-ball route from the number three. There it is. And that's exactly what we get here. Pretty easy for a quarterback, easy throw. Yeah, it's a, it's a zone killer. You're going to stretch that, uh, that buzz defender. If yep. he gets depth, throw the flat. If he gets width with the flat route, throw the curl. Yep. Right in the window, he vacates. Yep. It's a simple. Uh, some wins on the Colts game. this year. We'll see how that goes. Mm. Um, now we got we got mesh here. This one came from um, oh, I forget his name. He writes on Green Bay. Can't think of it off the top of my head. I apologize to him. He's one of the better Packers writers I've seen. This is just mesh. Mesh is a very popular concept where you're shallow crossing down here. You're trying to get teams in man-to-man and pick them, or you're trying to get confusion in zone. Teams have gotten even crazier. The Chip Kelly mess started to become real popular where you would have a set of that stick route right over top of the quarterback settling right in the middle. Because what happens is you get eyes chasing the two. If you get zone, right, you get man, you can sometimes, oftentimes, find a way to beat it. One of your mess routes is going to rub a guy open. You're going to run defenders together, whatever. Teams started saying, okay, how do we combat zone? Well, if we have these two crossers going, eyes are going to be chasing these crossers. Let's sit a guy right over the quarterback's face, too. And, man, does this stuff work pretty well. The Browns ran it a ton with Freddie Kitchens, and it worked well for the most part. I lied. Ohio State under Urban Meyer. They uh, they oh, ran yeah. the Kelly version. And then with that, in this case, because we're in the red zone, that, uh, that over the ball route right there isn't very deep, but he'd sit it at like 15 to 18 yards. They bang that thing all the time. It sure would. And, and this then, is this is the point. You got an over and under. You always communicate who's over, who's under. Mount Union ran mesh all the time. Everyone, everyone runs oh mesh. Everyone's got it in the playbook. Except for, except for when I was playing. We didn't run it enough. That's for damn sure. But we played teams that ran it, and Mount used to run it like crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, it just takes one guy chasing – Right here, and you know the window's pretty damn open. Yeah, yeah, you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of wheel routes as well. You'll see the tailback tag on wheel routes there, particularly uh, the, like some people run it with what's called a, a bench route, like a ten to twelve yard out um, yep. to the tailback side. Then other teams they'll they'll turn that into a post. They'll sort of drain out the coverage with that post route, and then they'll they'll slip the uh, tailback behind on a wheel. Always a nice little shot play. There it is, one more time without the draw ups. Yeah, I mean, because you have these basic concepts and teams start to know them, and then you can start doing things off of them, right? Like that's the fun stuff is when you're like, okay, they're a heavy drive team on third and long. Mm-hmm. Well, this is this is something they'll do. You'll run a, uh, you know, a double route from number three here instead of the traditional dig route, you know. So this is back in 2018. The Browns run it down on the goal line here. You'll watch Jarvis run under, and I think this is. Help me out. He is with. Ooh, he was with tennis or the the Texans last year. Oh God, Brandon Fe- or uh, L- Fells, Darren Fells. There you go, Darren Fells. Yep, couldn't think of it off the top of my Good head. Call. Yeah, <laughs> Mesh, Andy, Andy says Mesh is one of his favorite plays on Madden. Listen, saw- Madden, Madden has gotten really good at including real concepts. I'll give them credit. Oh yeah, they have they have cool playbooks. Yeah, they they, they have, have done a nice job. There. So this is the the read you're trying to you're trying to read invert over the middle of the field here. Now, Baker's a little patient on this one, if I recall. 
uh, and, and hits the next window. So he could get this ball to Jarvis, but you understand as he gets this ball here, you got yeah, a, a backer ready to drive on it. So that's, the that's window that gets open is right here. Yep. But create Baker high -low. waits. Yep, create the high-low. Baker waits because I think that's Jesse Bates at the top of the field here is actually doesn't is doing a nice job reading Baker's eyes and he's starting to drive middle of the field to jump it if it's late. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he waits, he pushes out right, and once he does that, Bates never sees fells, and then it's an uh, I believe it's a back of the end zone touchdown. Yeah. There you go. See it from the end zone view. 57 does a nice job squatting. Patient with a nice ball. Easy enough. Now, Smash. This is fun. I have a video from when I was at the Browns game. I don't know why in 2018 I took a video of this play, but this is me up in the upper deck way back before I was covering them where I needed to not be at games. <laughs> but this is this is the simple stuff here, which is some teams now, if you're in a bunch set, you're not going to hitch up right here. You know, it's silly. You want to push wide. Either you're going to do a – some teams would do these wide hitches at the high school level. Some teams will do just a – three to five roll, four to six, whatever depth you want to teach it at. And then that puts the same sort of lateral press on a decision maker. Mm -hmm. you, get a, mm -hmm. you get a corner out here over top. And I think here the Browns check, release, chip, and then settle. We used to do this too in college all the time. We would just have that easy little check down there if we wanted to use it. Yeah, you'll also see, um, particularly in this offense, they'll run a little thin or a five-yard in route or under route from the uh, mm -hmm. from the number one there. He'll sort of uh, he'll turn inside and then he'll uh, he'll continue moving until he finds a hole. Kind of just settle down. It's a late check. Yep. Pretty easy read for the quarterback. Corners down the whole way. Never even sells any sort of commitment to the back here or to the to the corner route. Anything behind him. And it's just. Mm -hmm. Getting open, create separation, which Higgins does, and put it on him. Yeah, it's a good ball. Pretty simple. Honey hole. Now, uh, back to Ohio State, we were talking earlier. This is spot, right? Yep, spot or snag. People call it different variations. You typically will hear it called spot or snag. You're just getting a flat little inside stick. You're going to settle it. Typically, typically five. Could be taught a little longer with a corner right over top. And you're just reading invert, right? Mm -hmm. What's this yeah. overhang doing? Mm -hmm. this playing I'm trying to see if this is going to play here we go okay he chases it's the corner biting if the corner's biting you got a chance to go over top to the corner route it's an easy throw man it, some of these are just meant to, and it's a great goal line concept too really good goal line concept. yeah let's well, you could run it out a bunch oh yeah it's a them um, this is a uh like classic example of a triangle read where you've got three receivers making that triangle. So you end up with two different, uh, two different stretches between the snag route and the flat route. You've got your horizontal or sort of side to side stretch and mm -hmm. it's your triangle. And then between your flat route and your corner route, you've got a vertical stretch depending on again, the, uh, the defense you're getting and so on and how you want to read it that way. Who you want to target. And yeah. This is, is another one that's in everyone's playbook. It is a very popular concept. In fact, as we're talking about Ohio State, um, Braxton Miller's touchdown against Virginia Tech where he pulled the 360, that was on snag. He was on the it corner was. out. It was. I forgot about that. Uh, dagger concept, which is you're going to get number two pushing vertical and you're going to get a dig route that runs underneath that vertical push. Quarterback's reading safety. What does the safety do? Where does he chase? Where do the eyes go? Nice cover three concept because you can push him out of the way and have a nice vertical stretch, and that opens a window. And you can mm -hmm. see this window here from the top of the screen. I should draw it up for you guys real quick. Yeah. Get a push here. A dig route that runs underneath it. I think that's Jarvis. I think you get the back late. To Fly the down low. Yep. yep. Let's play it. This is a too high killer as well, particularly mm -hmm. cover four. You clear out the uh, you clear out that play side safety with that seam route from the number two. Then you got the yep. corner trying to chase that that dig route, breaking late inside. And then again, you use like a, a flat route or a shallow route or something to control the underneath defender. So you got the the cushion, and then you just drop the ball down in between. Get huge throwing windows there. You do. That's a good point. 
Some concepts are designed to beat certain coverages. Some concepts can can handle all coverages. You know that there's particular. I mean, flood. We're going to talk flood here. There's so many variations of flood. You can switch the routes from number two and number three. Sell him immediately to the flat. Push him to the to the uh, out route or you know sail or whatever you want to call it. Uh, what do they call that? Again, we said it earlier. I'm forgetting it off the top of my head. Uh, not to matter all too much. Um, just an out route. That's what we'll label it as. This is Denver under Scangrello, which is a similar offense two years ago to what Cleveland runs. He's a disciple. You got a vertical outside, flat from the back, occupying shallow, and then a 10 yard out from your, your tight end. You're creating three levels of stress on the defense. Mm-hmm. And court, short, so. intermediate. Go ahead. Well, I would say that um, NFL defensive coordinators call these concepts OVSs for outside vertical stretch. And you hit the nail on the head. It's a three level read. You're going to have your vertical, your intermediate, and your flat route. And you're, uh, you're looking to stress defenders, stress the intermediate guys. Again, sort of movement keys. And you're generally peeking at the, uh, at the vertical route, whether it's a, a go or a, or a post or whatever it might be. Also note the Browns run a ton of this stuff, a ton. Just going through, uh, looking for those routes today. I didn't. I guess I hadn't realized just how many uh, you know flood type concepts they uh, they run. It's a ton. Yeah. Yeah, four or five a game, easy. This is a pretty solid coverage on this, to be honest. I mean, mm-hmm. corner jumps jumps number two. It's just the ball is left inside a little bit and doesn't get intercepted. I think this might be Case Keenum. I know a fan can really run, man. This is Case Keenum. No, this is this is Drew Locke. Three is Drew Locke. So this must have been 19. or so. Is Locke a rookie in 19? I can't even remember anymore. Ooh, but he gets lucky because that's a dicey throw, man. Cornerback and I, you know, I don't – just kind of perfectly shielded, unlucky break for the defense on that one. Uh, let's talk Mills concept, popular – Florida, Florida concept back in the Steve Spurrier days, man. They used mm-hmm. to crush with this thing. It is a dig route by number two and then a, a vertical corner bang eight by the outside guy. You're putting stress on this free safety or strong or whoever, whatever side you want to run it to. Decide who you want to cover, man. Do you want to jump the dig? Because if you jump the dig, we're going to throw it over the top. If you want to sit back, we're going to hit the dig in the window that comes mm-hmm. open. Yeah, a Great they- example. Go ahead. Oh, this is another great triangle read, too, with that shallow coming under. A lot of people call this an NCAA concept, so it's just any combination of a post, a dig, and uh, and under, underneath shallow. And, and again, you can, it's, if you want to take a shot, you can read your safety for the, uh, for the dig, for the post. If you want something more intermediate, you can read the underneath defenders, like a hook, the hook defenders and, uh, mm-hmm. and cover three between the shallow and the dig again, sort of like you read in the drive concept. Um, this is also a this is a too high killer. You get rid of the uh, you get rid of the safety with that dig route, and then you've got the corner chasing that that bang eight or that skinny post from outside leverage on an inside breaking route. It's a ton of space to cover. This is a great throw from Baker, man. Especially staring down pressure, feeling the safety jump the dig, like he sees here, mm-hmm. putting this ball perfectly over the top. It's a really great throw his rookie year. I was like, oh. There might be something there with this might guy. Might be something with this kid, huh? Might right. be something with this kid. Uh, just classic post wheel. It's a popular mm-hmm. concepts uh, that that covers all grade levels. I, you know, you love to run it at mm-hmm. younger levels because you can get gullible defensive mm-hmm. backs to bite on double moves, right? You want to so sell the out route and turn up. So we are a um, we are a cover four base defense. I'm talking my my high school uh, defense. I coordinate here, and a, a day one call we put in pre snap is alert switch. Anytime we have. Um, a number two in the slot of the potential to get this this post wheel, or we call them switch switch concepts. We our kids pre snap they see number two in the slot, alert switch, alert switch, because it's a it's a mother effort to teach high school kids to pick this up and pass it off correctly. It's mother effort at college and NFL levels. Yeah, sometimes. yeah, there too, there too. It's uh, yeah, it's just, it's another zone killer. It's nice yeah. against cover three because you're gonna you're gonna drain out the coverage. You're gonna use that post route to clear out the corner. And you know, via your rules, your uh, your buzz defender to that side has to carry the wheel route, and it's just it doesn't happen very often. Does not. Good ball there here too, right in time. Break tendencies, uh, four verts, wildly popular concept, all the way back to young levels. I mean, it's all over Madden. Want everyone run deep? Hey, everyone, go deep on one. Um, 
schoolyard football. There are teaching points to this. If you get open coverage, sometimes if you get open coverage, teams don't want to push vertical against open coverage, so they'll call a breaker. When I was playing at the college level, we would tag a breaker side. Um, if you got open coverage, you would break it off at 12 and dig mm-hmm. across. Some people will sit them down and just hitch spots. Some people, like I said, I will dig them. Some people will, if they get true cover four read, they will – squat their outside guys on certain tags just based on whatever look they get for the week typically you'll have a check release from the back if his guy doesn't come he'll break one way or the other based on his choice calling this a choice route there's so many different playbooks but you know the general idea for quarterbacks is you're coming back if you get a close coverage look you get single high look the safety off and come back the other direction think um should have put this one in honestly but think Rashard higgins touchdown against the colts first half Right, it was just a vertical four verts concept, and Baker held the safety with his eyes, mm-hmm. uh, and, I, and and throws a touchdown to Higgins from number two. I think it was actually out of empty. He did that. Now in three by one, it's a little different instead of two by two, and it can work on the goal line too. You'll see here. You were trying to hit landmarks, right? You're trying to stretch the defense vertically. Typically, is what you're trying to do. It's for, you know, landmarks. Some teams will call these benders. They'll bend them back inside, right? Some teams will. If you got open coverage, they'll call them benders. If you got, you know, if you got a single high safety, you're trying to make this guy make a decision, and then you're trying to keep him vertical to stay away from him. But if you get a safety here and a safety here, you, you know, you can bend it back inside around the hook coverage and sit it down inside there. Now, if it's out of three by one, which we see here, since we don't have a guy in this spot right here um, to the left of the quarterback, you just work your way across and get to the yeah, same landmark. This is a, called a special so, route. Yep. All good special. So, quarterback's reading. You get a you get a chase technique from the backer here. He's turning his back. Hey man, if his back's turned, his head's turned, put it up there and let your guy go get it. Pretty good throw from Dak. Who was having just a stellar year before he got hurt, man. Mm-hmm. It was he was dicing people up. This is a four verts look from true two by two coming up. Chiefs are the Tampa two. Yep. Deep middle chaser. The, the film quality is pretty terrible, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, you, you can see the stretch it's putting on defenses here. Yeah, let's see how they uh Oh, hey, I got the safety. Number yep. two. Yep. That's the goal. Stretch safeties, make them cover too much of the field. This is called Yankee concept. Usually going to get some sort of double double quick move here. It could be a, a shimmy. could be two two plant inside, outside foot, get back to the post with a long cross over the top and over route. That puts a bind here. Atlanta used to run this like crazy with Julio Jones. So tough to cover on this concept. He'll stem. You can see that hard inside stem, both sides. He's just tough to cover across the field, man. <laughs> it's just it's a concept the Browns should be running more of. They ran a little bit of it last year, but not as much as they should. Yeah, we so it. Else, what yeah, the Browns really like doing with that deep over is uh, obviously I'll play action, Bill. Um, They'll they'll make it look like a post and then they'll um, they'll move them back to the corner. It's actually really it's 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 cool the way they set it up. Sometimes they'll run it with the post route like you see here, and then they'll have yep. some sort of flat route or you know Jarvis Landry coming under the formation like a, a swap boot. But they'll uh, they'll alternate between alternate between the post and alternate between uh, running the corner there. And teams yep. start sitting on it, and they will, they do. Yeah, Julio is just a difficult cover. Yeah. All right, so now this is a leak concept, which is an extremely popular NFL concept right now, especially for teams that run the offense the way the Browns do. Uh, you know, what you're doing is selling outside zone one direction. Now, what makes it extremely difficult is it looks like the tight end is a part of that zone blocking scheme, as they typically are. They're going to go the direction that the run action is going popularly. The way you hash it out with your defense is, hey, they're going to boot off of it and throw play side. Okay, If they play action, they're coming out play side naked, and they're going to throw it. They're going to throw it that direction. So teams got smart and said, hey, why don't we just send that tight end who's running that course anyway up the opposite 
sideline, right? Pretty easy thing to do uh, based on what the scheme is. This is at the college level, North Dakota State, okay? Um, just watch 82 here. No one recognized him. What it does is it gets out. No one recognized him. Now, the Browns tried this three or four times last year, didn't have any success with it. They tried it, didn't have much success with it. Uh, it just it depends. You catch the right team at the right time. Shanahan kills people with this concept. They do it to George Kittle all the time. But, yeah, I mean, you're booting away from it. It's like just – I mean, it's essentially a boot throwback. It's mm-hmm. it's just it's just dressed up really nicely. So you know, there watch, is a- watch, Go ahead. Oh, so one of the reasons it works so well in this offense is because um, – when, when you're playing teams that play a lot of cover three, it, it takes advantage of their robot rules. So their their linebackers, their underneath defenders are taught when they see play action, they're going to punch out. They're literally going to turn and sprint towards a landmark. So generally, that landmark is going to be opposite the, the direction yeah, of the well, play. So watch they just these two here. Yeah, you can see everyone's backs turned right there. So they're just not in a position to see the see the tailback when he blocks for that two pause and then leaks out the field there. Yep, nobody sees him. It's hard. It's hard to cover. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If your quarterback's got to be committed, I think this is Trey Lance. Your quarterback's got to be committed mm-hmm. to it too. He can't peek. He's got to have his eyes play side and then set and find him. It's a nice job by Lance. This is going to probably be in his 49ers playbook on day one. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Titans also ran a ton of it. Yeah, all your all your uh, your Shanahan Shanahan offenses, they all have it in. This one's fun because they say we're not going to run a backside tight end on it. What we're going to do here is we're going to let this front side tight end do it. We're going to sit him in here. Get, they call it get in the muck and then sneak out. Watch. Nobody notices that guy sneaking out of there, man. Oh, wow. I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen it either, but I was looking at tape of some of these examples. And I was like, oh, That's okay. It is fun. That's why Arthur Motes has a head coaching job now. Mm-hmm. So. There's that. This was fun, John. There's a ton of concepts here, man. We covered many, many things. If there's one that you guys know and you want to see or you know a play and you would be interested in what it's called, some of the teaching points, let us know. We would be happy to help answer any of those. If you're on the podcast version and what we said in here doesn't make sense, as usual, hit me up and we'll be more than happy to uh, to help you with it. John, thanks for this, man. This was good. Yeah, of course. As always, thank you for, uh, for having me on, Jake. I appreciate it. Of course, guys. Of course. Um, Yeah, check out Twitch. We are on Twitch. I'm going to keep reminding you at the end of every podcast or live session. Go to Twitch. There is a link in this podcast and this video on YouTube to go there and subscribe. That's where all of our live content. So when John and I do Chalk Talks during the season, we'll be doing it on Twitch. It'll be available on YouTube the next day, but the live stuff will be on Twitch. Make sure you go there and check those out and join us on that new streaming platform, which is the best streaming platform, live stream platform. And we want to take advantage of that and make it a better experience for you guys. So, um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. Again, if you have questions, hit us up. We'll answer anything. And if anything needs clarified in the comments of this video on YouTube, we will help out in there as well. Appreciate all of you for joining us. Until we talk next time, and as usual, go Browns. Go Browns.